Hi viewers, welcome back. In today's video, we are going to discuss about gestational diabetes. Okay, so gestational diabetic mellitus is abnormal tolerance to glucose. So sometimes it is detected first time during pregnancy. Okay, so when there is an abnormal glucose tolerance which is detected first time or otherwise coming for the first time. So, at that time only it is coming for the mother, then also you term it as gestational diabetes mellitus. Okay. So, it can be either first time detected or first time present in the mother during the pregnancy, then you term it as gestational diabetic mellitus. So, now we will see the risk factors of diabetic mellitus. Okay. So, what are the risk factors of diabetes? Okay. So, you know the general risk factors of diabetes. Okay. So, you know like um, when there is an um, abnormal food intake, when the insulin production is not appropriate to the insulin utilization, then there is an abnormal tolerance to the glucose and at that time the patient presents with diabetes. But here what is happening? Again, the same condition persists, but there are few more reasons or few more risk factors which is causing gestational diabetes. Okay. So, now we will see the risk factors for gestational diabetes. So, first factor is the family history. So, when there is a family history of diabetes, okay, so that is like parents, uncles, aunts, siblings, so anybody so who is present with diabetes the woman or the mother who is pregnant is also having a proportionate risk of having diabetes okay so the next factor is the previous baby so when there is a previous baby with a birth weight of more than 4 kgs at that time you have to suspect there may be a gestational diabetes because the previous birth was a big baby that is the baby was above 4 kg then it can be gestational diabetes during this pregnancy also so you have to suspect for gestational diabetes during this pregnancy and then comes the previous stillbirth so that is stillbirth so stillbirth is nothing but when the baby is born the baby is born dead so which occasion so you don't know what is the reason there is the death of the baby but sometimes what happens the uh, obstetrician or your gynecologist they suggest a autopsy so that is like uh, you take the baby for a post mortem and then you find out what is the cause of death in that baby so at that time when there is a hyperplasia of the islets of Langerhans that is like when these cells are responsible for the production of insulin. So, when there is an hyperplasia at that time there may be a risk of gestational diabetes for the mother and then the next condition of perinatal losses. So, you do not know again there is like what is the complication. So, during the time of birth at that time when there is a death you have to report it as perinatal loss so when there is a perinatal loss at that time also you can suspect there is a gestational diabetes so the next cause is polyhydramnias when the mother is having polyhydramnias the fluid level is going to be more already we know when there is diabetes the mother is going to have increased thirst and increased hunger. So, similarly here also the mother is going to have increased amount of fluid like your polyhydramnia. So, in that condition also the mother can have gestational diabetes and then coming to frequent vaginal infections that is like frequent vaginal infections sometimes at that time when you go in for analysis you will be able to rule out the mother is having gestational diabetes okay and then coming to persistent glycosuria so persistent glycosuria is urine in like urine is containing sugar so normal urine doesn't contain anything okay but here when the mother is having diabetes at that time there is an increased excretion of urine like sugar in the urine so that is called as glycosuria so at that time what happens there is increased um, 
sugar in the urine and the microorganisms can grow more faster. So, that is the reason like there is very common uh, urinary infection and very common vaginal infection because of glycosuria presenting for the mother. Okay. So, then comes the age. So, when the age of the mother is above 30, you have to consider the mother is having a risk of having diabetes, gestational diabetes. And then coming to the factor of obesity, the mother when she is obese, definitely she is having a risk of having gestational diabetes. Okay. So, these are the risk factors where you have to consider the mother can go in for a gestational diabetes. So, the risk factors are the family history of diabetes, previous baby, previous stillbirth, perinatal losses, hydramnias, persistent glycosuria, age of the mother above 30 and obesity of the mother. So, with these risk factors, you come to the conclusion the mother can have gestational diabetes. Then coming to over diabetes, what is over diabetes? It is an again an abnormal condition in diabetes. So, what is happening in over di diabetes? So, here the fasting blood glucose level is going to be more than 126 mg per dl. So, what is the normal thing? It has to be less than 80. Okay? But here what is happening? It is going to be more than 126 mg per dl. So, that is your fasting level. So, when we come to the postprandial level, so that is like when you take the sugar level after 2 hours of food, at that time what must be there. So, if it is again more than 200 mg per dl, you have to consider it is over diabetes. So, where in both the condition of fasting as well as in postprandial level, the sugar level is going to be very high where you term it as over diabetes. Next, we start with the classification of diabetes. So, when we come to the classification of diabetes, we have three classification. Group A is the gestational diabetes mellitus. Okay. So, here in this there will be an increased amount of sugar in the urine as well as in the blood. So, in the bloodstream you know it is circulating in the bloodstream. So, there is an increased amount of sugar in the blood as well as when it is getting excreted you are able to see it as glycosuria. Okay. So, you are having gestational diabetic mellitus that is group A and then coming to group B you have overt diabetes without vasculopathy. So, you know the complication of diabetes are retinopathy, neuropathy, nephropathy, all these pathies are coming as complications of your diabetes. Now, when the woman is having over diabetes without retinopathy, neuropathy, nephropathy, then you term it as group B type of gestational diabetes. And then coming to group C, we are able to see over to diabetes with vasculopathy, that is like the woman presents with both that is like a retinopathy may be present, neuropathy or nephropathy can be present. Okay. So, these are the three classifications of gestational diabetes mellitus. So, first is the gestational diabetes mellitus, then the over diabetes mellitus without vasculopathy, then group C that is your diabetic over diabetes with vasculopathy. So, these are the three classifications of gestational diabetes. Okay. So, then we come to the effects. So, what happens when the woman is having gestational diabetes? So, so whenever we see a disease condition in pregnancy, we always must think that there is some effect on the mother, there is some effect on the fetus. Okay. So, now we will see the maternal effects of diabetes on the mother and the effects of the diabetes on the fetus. So, first is the effect of diabetes on the mother. So, the mother presents with hyperglycemia. So, there will be an increased blood sugar level in the mother. So, the next thing is glycosuria. So, when you go in for the analysis of urine of the mother, there will be glucose excreted in the urine which you term it as glycosuria. So, hyper 
glycemia, glycosuria and then ketoacidosis. So, when there is inadequate carbohydrate for the breaking down process for the energy, the fat cells are going to get broken down and the end product of your protein is your ketone bodies. So, when these ketone bodies are getting excreted in the urine, you are getting ketoacidosis and then coming to the like already the kidney is not having inadequate absorption. So, what happens? There will be sodium and potassium losses. So, what is happening? The effects of diabetes on the mother includes hypoglycemia, glycosuria, ketoacidosis that is because of bre breaking down of the protein bodies, the end product of protein metabolization and then we have sodium and potassium losses. So, these are the complications of the mother, the effects of diabetes on the mother. Then coming to the effect of diabetes on the fetus. So, first is perinatal mortality. So, um, any time maybe it is in the early pregnancies in the first or second any uh, time of the pregnancies there can be a loss of the pregnancy so perinatal like your mortality rate is going to be high when there is a gestational diabetes and then you have macrosomia macrosomia is nothing but big baby so already we have seen you know uh, when the mother is having diabetes the mother will have obesity Okay. So, what is happening? Again, similarly, there is like uh, these uh, carbohydrates are going to get deposited even in the organs of the baby. So, what happens? The baby will also put on weight. So, you will be able to see macrosomia or big baby for a gestational diabetes mother. And then we have congenital malformation. So, when there is a diabetes, there may be a high risk of having a congenital anomaly baby. Then we come to the neonatal complications. So, the neonatal complications you know there are lot of neonatal complications. So, we have seen hyperglycemia of the baby. So, when the mother is fasting, sometime when there is inadequate sugar level for the mother, when there is uh, like if she is not um, if ju just she is taking an insulin and uh, if she is not taking adequate food, the mother can go in for hypoglycemia. Similarly, the baby also can go in for hypoglycemia and then respiratory distress. So, uh, see hypoglycemia not only happens like inside, so it happened like after the delivery of the baby, these many days what happened? So, it was the uh, mother was taking uh, insulin and the uh, uh, like uh, glucose tolerance was there for the mother when the fetus was inside. But now after birth what happens? The baby is in demand for increased sugar level. So, at that time what happens? If you do not feed or if there is inadequate sugar for the baby, the baby can go in for hypoglycemia. So, usually the correction is dextrose. So, you have to administer dextrose for the baby ok and then respiratory distress. So, usually what happens there will not be adequate lung maturity for these type of babies and sometimes when there is a big baby there may be a premature delivery or there may not be adequate growth for the baby. So, what happens there may be a distress respiratory distress present for the baby and then hyperbilirubinemia. So, when there is an increased bilirubin level and the blood ok. So, you know so there is a, a liver dysfunctioning taking place and because of that there will be hyperbilirubinemia for the baby and then polycythemia may be present because of increased cell destruction then hypocalcemia and hypomagnesemia will be present and then cardiomyopathy. So, when the heart cells are functioning to the extreme at that time there may be a cardiomyopathy for the baby ok. So, these are the neonatal complications. So, it includes hypoglycemia, respiratory distress, hyperbilirubinemia, polycythemia, hypomagnesemia, hypocalcemia and cardiomyopathy. So, these are the neonatal complications. So, then coming to the screening of diabetes 
manitus. Okay. So, screening what are the important areas when you are going to screen the mother. Okay. So, usually your the best preferred test is the glucose tolerance test. So, when you do this test. You do not do this glucose tolerance test for all the mothers. So, it is done only for high risk mother whom you suspect there may be a diabetes. So, at that time you will go in for GTT. So, how do you suspect when there is a glycosuria less than 20 weeks. So, you keep on going with the antenatal uh, checkups. Okay. So, when you are doing regular antenatal checkup at that time when you rule out when the mother is having glycosuria less than 20 weeks you have to suspect there may be a gestational diabetes. So, at that time what you have to do is like you will go in for GTT or glucose tolerance test. So, first you have to assess the fasting blood sugar level then you have to administer 75 gram of glucose. So, powdered glucose you have to give 75 grams and after 2 hours again you will be checking that is the post prandial blood glucose level you will be assessing and you are able to rule out the sugar level. Okay. So, the fasting level must be more than 95 mg and the post prandial level if it is more than 120 mg you have to confirm the mother is having gestational diabetes. So, this is the way you will be diagnosing a mother to have a gestational diabetes. So, with this we are completing the introductory part of gestational diabetes where we have discussed about the meaning of gestational diabetes the risk factors for gestational diabetes, the uh, classification and the overt diabetes, the effect of diabetes on pregnancy that is the effect of diabetes on the mother, on the fetus as well as the effects on the neonates are the neonatal complications we have discussed. Then finally, we have discussed the screening for gestational diabetes. So, in today's class we have seen till here, in the next class we will see the management of diabetes that is like the management of gestational diabetes during pregnancy, labor and the puerperial period. Okay. Then also we will see the complications of gestational diabetes mellitus. Okay. Hope you understood the class. In case of any doubts, kindly go give your comments in the comment box so that I can give adequate clarification. Thank you. Take care. Bye.